morning. We welcome all of you here for Mass this morning and also everyone watching on our live stream. Let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts for Mass. rise and join in our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is our Feast of Feasts. This is the very reason why we are Christians. 
we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. St. Paul said, if the Lord had not been raised, then our faith is in vain. One of the beautiful aspects about Easter is the contrast between darkness and light. In the scriptures, at the very beginning of creation, when God created the heavens and the earth, he said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. In our gospel, we heard about Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus. Very early in the morning, she went to the tomb. And the day was progressing from darkness to light. Darkness is a symbol for sin and death. It represents a lack of faith. And in contrast, we can look to the light, just as we look to this Paschal candle. The light is a symbol for Christ, who is a light of the world. He is the one who scatters the darkness of sin and death. And so this light is our story. This is our salvation history. This is how God is coming to save us. And Christ tells us that our story is the victory of life over death, the triumph of light over darkness. And so on this Feast of Easter, we are going to simply focus on two aspects of the resurrection. First, why did the early Christians have a true faith that Jesus rose from the dead? We, like the early Christians, confess and believe that Jesus is truly the living God, that he is the Lord of the living, not of the dead. And so these early Christians didn't come to believe in the resurrection based on seeing an empty tomb. They were actually thinking Jesus' body was stolen. They didn't believe in the resurrection because they saw a rolled up a burial cloth. These early Christians didn't even believe in the resurrection based on others saying that Jesus rose. So the reason why these early Christians actually believed in the resurrection is this. They actually met him. They encountered the living Christ. Mary Magdalene, when she looked at the empty tomb, didn't believe until she actually met Jesus. At first, she thought he was a gardener, but she was able to say, I have seen the Lord. For the Apostle Thomas, he doubted until he was standing in the upper room and saw the glorified wounds of Christ. And he said, my Lord and my God. And so believers in the resurrection are those who have actually encountered this living one. Where in our old life can we truly say, I have seen the Lord? my Lord and my God. The greatest desire of our lives is to encounter him, is to grow in relationship with Jesus Christ. And he lives. Second, since Jesus is truly living, how can his resurrection reach us today? In 2006, Pope Benedict XVI gave an Easter homily, and said that the resurrection can reach us in two ways, through faith and baptism. One of the ways that we can grow in faith and the resurrection comes to us is through prayer. How truly different my life is when I can at least pray once a day, Jesus, increase my faith. Prayer is all about heart speaking to heart. My heart speaking to Jesus' heart. Christ's heart speaking to my heart. When we have that prayer each and every day, we grow in faith, and the resurrection comes to us. 
The resurrection also comes to us through baptism. In baptism, we enter into Jesus' death, but then his resurrection. Baptism lead, leads us to eternal life. And so this sacrament of baptism is a way that we encounter Jesus each and every day. It's this promise to us that Jesus is with us in all things. Something unique about the Easter liturgies, like at the Easter vigil last evening, is we had baptisms. And we'll be renewing our baptismal promises shortly. So on this feast of Easter, our parish, st parish and staff of Corpus Christi want to wish you and your family a happy Easter especially from Monsignor Schumacher, our pastor, from Father Dosh, our choir, our, our deacons here. We just want you to be filled with Christ's joy this day. And may you truly encounter the living Jesus. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please stand. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Your response will be, I do. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen.
Let us turn to the Lord with our petitions. For Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living body of Christ gathered here, that we nourish the spirits of those who have received the Easter sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our prayer basket and for all who have asked for our prayers, Rod Barth, Asen Huck, Joe and Alice Olheiser, Christian Silbernagel, Dolly Lear, Liam Voss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the eternal joy and peace of Rosemary Ducart, Verna Carey, and Constance McGilkey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers of the ones in the silence of our hearts. We make this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory song number 650, Baptized in Water.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exalt in with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. On this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he is betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Henry, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, on us all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be chorus to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
join in singing our communion songs, number 352, Come to Me and Drink. At this time, for any children, we have a little gift from the parish for any children that want to come up and grab an Easter gift. Please stand.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Your response will be Amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may, may, may you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast. Come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Holy